guess where we are? We'll give you a hint. Hussy, what state are we in? Arizona. Of the USA. And in Arizona, we are in the Grand Canyon! Imagine the Grand Canyon with no people. Just the psychedelic color canyon walls, the wind, and the river silent, and the milk chocolatey at the bottom of the gorge. Well, that's how it must have been like to the Native Americans, the indigenous people who have lived in and around the Grand Canyon about 12,000 years ago, and to the Spanish explorers who laid eyes on the rift in the 16th century. And being here right now, during winter when it's low season, wow, it's so quiet and so peaceful. We have such, so much of the space to ourselves because in the summer is when it's peak season and there's actually six million visitors who come to the Grand Canyon every single year. You can also see the snow, there's little bits of snow. This is what I mean. There are parts of the canyon where during low season that I'm just watching my stuff where I'm going because it's quite icy and snowy that you can just literally have to yourself. So right above us up there is the canyon rim walk and that's where you walk along the rim of the canyon but then there's this little part where you can actually just climb down and there's over this year and my boyfriend over there. <laughs> that is utterly quiet. Aside from the roaring of the wind, some squirrels here and there. But wow. It's just do we really have this to all ourselves right now? This is incredible. Huh. What a view out here, huh? Looks so far. Yeah, it literally just goes right out into the distance. Wow. The, the red colors. Wow! It echoes. Ah, I love America. What a country. What snacks do you have there for us? Have an abs. <laughs> Can it get more American than this? <laughs> Mmm. Here's some trail, our version of trail mix. Peanuts, chocolate. Mmm. <laughs> With a astounding view, that is. Mmm. Now, this is my version of the American dream. <laughs> Look at Yurun. He's like a wild coyote in the Grand Canyon. You camouflage well. We're back up now onto the rim walk. And as you can see, it's quite easy. Quite paved. What do you have now? Oh, my MS. <laughs> okay, now there's more snacks in there. <laughs> All right. Yes, for $35, you get a seven day pass. And that's the only option, really. You can get longer passes, but you can't get like a one day or two day pass. So we're exploring the Grand Canyon for two days. And we got a seven day pass, $35, stick it onto your car, and then you're allowed all these access to these sites for free. People come here, walk their dogs, do little jogs, but we're here to explore a little bit. So that's why we went off of the trail a little bit. Just a little time. Man. All along the trail though, you get these magnificent view of the Grand Canyons peeking out. We're just walking down the first overlook point and the sun is coming out! And the clouds are being pushed away. Look at this guy's over there. But the light hits and it feels like we're in the Lion King where everything the light touches is our kingdom. So that's where the mules take you if you went on a mule ride? No. It's a little icy now, they said. You can see that there. And not a lot of people are walking or riding. Now, the Grand Canyon is an erosion formed by water, ice, and wind over 
I don't know how many years, millennia, but it's considered one of the seven wonders of the world. I'm, of course, like look at this place. And the layers of sedimentary rocks were formed over millions and millions and millions and millions of years and provide significant insight into Earth's geological time scale. Just, I mean, the first people here, in, like, to be here and then now that we are here it really feels like a capsule of time that we just wander back in wow now look the sharp blue skies and you can see how the clouds create this formation of shadows that just looms over the canyon the next point where we are right now that we can literally go straight up to the edge there's no railings here at this point. Oh my god. My heart, my anxiety. What? Wow. What an extraordinary view. So sweeping. As a Britney fangirl, can't come to the Grand Canyon without thinking of the iconic, legendary music video of Britney Spears, I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. I'm not a girl, not yet a woman. All I need is time to figure out what is mine. And this is like where she's standing in the canyons and then the video it takes place in this place. Basically I'm on a pilgrimage to walk in her footsteps. nice contrast between the blue skies and the red of the canyon. It feels like I'm in a painting. Now with the Grand Canyon you want to see it in different points and different view spots because it gives you so many different perspectives and throughout the days too because the different time of the day the light hits the rocks and the canyon and it illuminates it in such a beautiful way so in the morning it was so different from now during midday and soon later at sunset now without the Colorado River that we see here that just cuts a slice through the canyon well there would be no canyon because that's how this whole beautiful natural seven wonder of the world was created was through the Colorado River slicing it up. Yes. Look! Wow! What is it? I think it's a deer. <gasps> Ooh, another one! The other one is the Wow, there's so many of them. And the other one is pushing the other one on the on the street. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Wow. I feel like I'm on safari now, an American safari. made it to all the end of the overlook points on the Hermit Rest Trail. Now we are in the Desert Watch Tower which gives us kind of a 360 views from all these windows of the Grand Canyon outside. And this building is actually designed by Marie Coulter, an American architect, and it takes inspiration from a kippah. So inside it looks like a kippah. Unreal watchtower with just unreal views to go with it.
Desert Watchtower right now. And the indigenous artwork that surrounds the place created by a man named Fred Abudi, who is also indigenous from the Navajo, is just so beautiful. It's so detailed. Look at this. And it's all over the tower. And the tower has multiple floors, so we can keep on climbing up. Look, you can see some of the ruins right here. We're now exploring the Tusayan ruins, which is pretty cool. And these are the living quarters right here. So from the Desert View Watchtower, it took inspiration, the architecture, from this Akiva here. And Akiva is a ceremonial room built in a circle. Would have never expected that there's just so much to see and do just from the Grand Canyon. I mean, I know there's so many activities. You can bike, you can helicopter ride through the Grand Canyon, you can take a boat through the Colorado River that goes through the canyon. But even this itself, there's just so much you can always explore. This is what I'm talking about, an iconic Grand Canyon sunset where it pulls out all the red from the canyon against that blue sky. What a trip, huh? From our road trip, we made it to the Grand Canyon and today we're going to do the South Kaibab Trail or otherwise, as Yurun thinks, it's South Kebab. Kebab. Like the food. And now I'm already hungry before we have started the That's trail. That's that. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Except we're like miles away from everything. <laughs> oh. Ready? It's so snowy and so icy. I'm literally walking down in my Stan Smith, sliding down, just sliding down. Look at this trail. It goes zigzag all the way down. This is so dangerous going down. Literally, ice and my shoes. Don't have like ice picks or anything. They're not mountain boots, they're not hiking boots or anything. Just going down and trying not to slip and fall to my death. Lord protect us so I don't die, so I don't slip, crack, break my back, anything like that. Please, Mari on blood thinners. Don't need to have a brain hemorrhage because there will be more blood spilling out or anything. My blood is already thin enough. Yurun is just, hey Yurun. All along this passage, mules go during the summer, during the winter, doesn't matter what. See, can you imagine? I'm slipping and sliding, and the mules, they're carrying people's stuff up and down these trails. There's a lot of mule poo, but wow, the strength of a mule. It's gonna be my inspiration. Just think like a mule, just think like a mule. <laughs> Not like a donkey. A view! Uh-uh. Mm-mm. This is why we do these dangerous stuff. Mm-mm. Oh my god, look at that. There's already a warning. Look, look at this image. Why is he so sunburned? Wear a shirt, man. Puking. <laughs> Summertime is very dangerous. Yeah, like, is it... You'd think that wintertime is dangerous with all the ice and things, but... Too. Summertime is uh, more sneaky. Yeah, because you get dehydrated. Like, all the bugs, the mosquitoes, the sweat, and also, not dangerous, but the crowds. Sorry, I just can't stand crowds. And when we get a whole trail to ourselves, there's a few other hikers here, they're like hardcore hikers. I'm talking trekking poles and everything. Cool, you do you. But the thing is, is that when we get all this magnificent beauty and silence just for ourselves, it really does feel special. It makes the hike even more special to do it in the winter. This is why we do it in the winter, people! This too, look how nice it is with the little flecks of white snow in the mountain range. Oh my gosh. The colors, the burst of purple and red in the canyon right now. Against the backdrop of just a blue sky. Oh, it's better now because in the summer you can 
people get up to 40 degrees Celsius in the shadow. So I'm just in the shadow, 40 inside. degree. Are you kidding? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I can't can handle that. Dirty. I can always like put on more layers, but I can't peel my skin off. Are you kidding? It's only six degrees now, which is you know fine. It's like a brisk breeze. Are you kidding? Like. Toronto, where I grew up, is minus 35 regularly in the winter, so this is a really nice morning trek that we're doing. That's six hours! Six hours! But, so far, so beautiful. Made it to Ua Point, and it's so properly named because you can see how Ua and Ah uh, that I feel already from it. Look at that. And then you can literally walk off to the edge. Well, not walk off. <laughs> not walk off. Yeah, just walk, stand on the edge. Walk up to you. Walk up. Hey, how is he better in English than me? <laughs> You can still see a sneak peek of what left to come. How is a place like this real? I mean, truly being here, you can see why it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It deserves it. And it's a World Heritage Site because, of course, like look at this beauty of the Grand Canyon. Wow. Look, this looks like it just leads off into the canyon. We go around it. But then all of around us is a panorama of this great vista. Look at these cute mules! So now we've reached Cedar Ridge, which is all the way down from Aha Point. Ua Point. From up there. These mules are so cute! <laughs> now this is the American dream, isn't it? It's beautiful. America the Beautiful. Now I know where that name comes from. I always love being in places where I know it existed so long before me. So the Grand Canyon National Park is only a hundred years old, but even though that's like is such an old big number, this landscape here has been here of course way longer than the park itself and every single day the Grand Canyon shifts and change so no matter how often you come here how whenever you come here if we come here for you know this is our second time uh, third day uh, fourth time uh, fifth day you know no matter when we come here every little shifting rocks and the canyon gets wider and then moves every single time. So it shifts and changes and it grows with the age. So it's cool to know that we're here for now, but it will still be here and still grow long after when we're gone too. So, you know what they say, what goes down must come up. So we're hiking back up again, guys. It's a one way. It's not a round trip. You can make a round trip on the whew, on the South Kebab Trail. Man, I would love a kebab right now. But the nice thing is, as you can see, I took the off lots of layers because it has warmed right up. I would say it's about 10 degrees Celsius right now compared to before. And the trail, part of the ice has melted, so it's much easier now. 